We're friends, aren't we? Of course we are. Then we've got to help each other, sweetie. Because nobody else will. Believe me. Least of all our wretched husbands. Yes, you're right. Good. Tell me about Barry's journey to work. It's the same every day, is it? Yes. Same routine every day. Like I said, Barry's a creature of habit. Tell me what this routine is. Every detail. Well, he leaves the house at ten to eight, having had a jolly good moan at me about some domestic detail or other. For God's sake, Rose, keep an eye on the stove, will you please? Let it go out twice this week. Sorry, dear. It's not much to ask. Yes, Barry. They set off down Oldfield Gardens, left wheel into St George's Drive, then it's a quick march to Victoria. He gets the district line to South Kensington, rubbing shoulders with the great unwashed, he calls it. He gets on near the front of the train, so he's near the Piccadilly line exit when he gets off. There was moans about the crush. God help anyone who gets in his way. When he gets to the Piccadilly line platform at South Kensington, he always stands in the same place. It's so crowded, there's no chance of getting the first train. And anyway, Barry likes to get a seat. journey to work. Couldn't be duller, could it? Mrs Bell? Yes? You've come about the roof? I beg your pardon? Your telephones. About your gutters, Mrs Bell. Oh, well, I'm awfully sorry. I think there must be some mistake. Hello? Are you alone? Yes, of course I am. How are you? Did they come about the roof? What? Well, the workmen, darling. It's just to make sure someone saw you at home. Uh, I sent them away. Just say there was a mix-up about the dates if anyone asks. Ask about what? And darling, for God's sake, try and look surprised when they break the news. Antonio, what's going on? Best not talk for a couple of days. I'll ring you. <laughs>
Yes. Um, Detective Sergeant Painter, are you the wife of Wing Commander Barry Bell? Yes, I am. I'm afraid I've got some very bad news, Mrs. Bell. Ready, Mrs. Bell. Is, is, is he? Is his face? Oh, unmarked, Mrs. Bell. You needn't worry on that account. Oh. Yes, yes, that's my husband. That's, that's when Commander Bell. As your husband wouldn't have suffered, Mrs. Bell. What was that? His death would have been instantaneous. Oh, I am glad. I, I mean, I mean, I am so glad that he didn't suffer. See them much these days? Yes. Um, a friend gave them to me, actually. Stay at home this morning, did you, Mrs. Bell? After your husband left for work? Yes, yes, I did. On your own, I suppose. Oh, yes. Let's see. Apart from the workman, that is. Workman? They came about the roof. What time was that, Mrs. Bell? I was about half past eight. I see. God, this flat is drafty. Come here, lover. For Pete's sake, Antonio, let me have a breather. A real woman like you shouldn't need a breather. Some of us have to work, you know. After your last visit, I fell asleep during a physics lecture. Everybody falls asleep during lectures. If not when they're giving them. <laughs> Vic. What? Do you love me? Of course I do. We're good together, aren't we? It is absolutely the best ever for both of us, isn't it? Absolutely. So will you marry me? What? What kind of reaction a girl expects when she proposes? <laughs> just, 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 just a bit out of the blue, darling. I thought there was no chance of Hector letting you go. Well, if there was a chance? Well, of course. Like a shot. Only... Only... Antonia, university lecturers get paid practically nothing. Let's face it, you are used to living rather well. You don't need to worry about money, darling, because we're going to have lots. Now, come here. You've had your breather. <laughs> <laughs>